Perfect. Hello and welcome to the Backdoor GA Club. I'm John and, and today I'm joined by former Mayo All-Star Conor Mortimer to uh, maybe just have a wee chat about Jeremy Connolly's uh, fantastic Dublin career and a few more talk points in the COVID situation. So, Conor, how are you? Not too bad now, John. Yourself? Oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Just keeping keep it busy. So look, before we get into it, I will go through this man's achievements and there's lots of them. Uh, we'll not be to get too jealous of it, but you look at it, it's it's reality. So we've six all, eleven Leinster titles, six national leagues, and two all stars. People were very interested and nearly mesmerised by how he only has two all stars. Uh, Connor, can you sum that up for me? Ah, look at I mean, you know, I think it's it's probably the. You know, the stuff that came, I suppose, with Jeremy in relation to definitely the All-Stars anyways. I think some of the reported incidents didn't, you know, that people wouldn't have looked upon them as, as a great thing. Whether they were true or not, it's, you know, a lot of it is is paper talk or whatever. And, and to be fair, anyone that knows Jeremy Connolly, I've met him obviously quite a few times over the years. You know, very, very nice guy. Um Obviously, he went through his achievements there, obviously, as a footballer. And, you know, I think, you know, probably because he was so good, I think people kind of might, you know, you're always looking to kind of tear a few strips off the top, top players. Um, and I think that's been evident with, with Jeremy Conley over the years. You know, very physical, very physical player. You know, gave as good as he got. You've seen that with Leroy Keegan over the last few years. Never bowed down. Um you know, a little bit of dirt in him as well. Very similar to Peter Canavan. Um, you know, you wouldn't have seen it obviously as much with Canavan. Obviously, there wasn't as many cameras around at the time. But and it's not—it's not that they're dirty players. They just look after themselves in whatever way they need to do. Um, you know, you know yourself. The top players get obviously more more attention than others. So, you know, you got to fight fire with fire. And I think you know Conley for me was probably one of the best players that we've seen. Um, left foot, right foot. You know, the achievements, you know, are all well and good. But, I mean, you know, the, the actual brass of, of the way he played the game, you know, his balance was outstanding. You know, his his accuracy, his his passing, you know, his tackling even was, was up there with, with some of the best as well. And I think, you know, a lot of people wouldn't have seen that with Conley. You know, you did see, obviously, the, the good stuff. But, I mean, his work rate and his his desire to win was obviously second to none. And I think... I suppose what made him the player he was, and and you know, will, will Dublin, I suppose, suffer that he's not there? Of course, they will. I mean, he was probably pound for pound their their best player. I think over the last ten years, I think skill wise, football wise, the way he can change a game. I mean, that's it, it was undeniable, really. To be fair, and like, do you think a lot like Conley, like you know, if he wasn't really around for like say like the last couple of years, like do you think that might have had an impact, or maybe him kind of getting on that start in Dublin 15, do you think he lost too many years going to Boston and doing this and doing that and, you know, over the years? This year? Or even last year when he went to Boston and maybe he was he was going to go to Boston last year. Like, Do you think that had an impact on his longevity as a Dublin footballer? No, I, I don't think so. I think, it, you know, the decision that he would have made would have been strictly down to himself. Yeah. You know, I think any any manager... You know, you, you you wouldn't be a great manager if you're letting the likes of that caliber go, you know, at 33 years of age, when obviously the two or three more years left, if not, you know, four or five, he'd be in very, very good condition, looks after himself well. You know, obviously wanted to go to the States last year and play. Um, obviously things weren't going as well as they could have been going here for him. Um, and he's obviously entitled to do that, the same as everybody else. Obviously didn't work out. And it, I suppose it just showed the calibre that Jim Gavin held him in as a footballer. The fact that he brought him back in, upset a few players. And obviously they went on a one dollar Ireland, and so it was justified. And some of the things that he would have done in the games that he would have played obviously justified it as well. I mean, you're not, you don't bring back a player just for the sake of it. I mean, the calibre that he had and obviously they went on a one at then that justifies the decision to bring him back. Whether it upset people or not, that's pretty irrelevant because... You know, it's all about winning. It's all about the t the team ethos in Dublin in particular. Um, and you either buy into it or you don't. And then that's the long and short of it. Do we see many players like Conley around these days, Connor? Like, you know, we, some of the stuff he done on the football pitch, like you can't, you, you don't see many lads doing it, a lot of that these days. 
Like, was he a once in a lifetime player, would you say? Look, at it's fairly obvious that he is. Um, you know, you don't see too many naturally, you know, natural, natural footballers anymore. A lot of players are okay players. They work hard at it, get better. You know, a lot of the things Conley would have done look easy. Easy for him because he's so good at it. Um, obviously, he practices hard and trains hard, the same as everybody else, but he has a lot of natural ability and his balance, as I mentioned, is... If you've got good balance, you know, you can do an awful lot of things. And obviously he worked hard on his left and right foot. I believe he's had the, that quality for pretty much all his life, you know. And obviously uh, uh, the way I'd revert to it, uh, obviously I'm involved or have been involved with hurling teams in Dublin and he can strike as well off his left and right. That balance is no different in football. Your left and right foot, if you have that balance and he has it. Um, so, you know, you, you don't see too many. They come... You know, once every blue moon, Colin Cooper is another one, probably in Kerry. Clifford is probably another one that's coming as well. Not as naturally talented as Connolly, either of them, um, I might add. But, you know, Connolly's a different, different gravy. And, and you know, it's a, it's a sad loss to the GA, to be fair. You know, I, I've always enjoyed watching him. He's a bit of an enigma. Um, top, top class player. And he's one of those players, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get. It'll always be good, but it's just how good is it going to be? That's, that's the question, you know. The time, um, mm. you know, we're, we're talking, we're talking October now. We're hopefully might have a preseason, maybe at the end of October. You know, after last year's All Ireland final replay, you would have thought, oh, sure, Connolly might do another year or two. Do you think mm. it might have been Desi Farrell's call, or was he dropped, or it's hard to know? I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. As I said, I mean, any manager worth their merit will always take the best that you're offered. The best players in the county you want on your squad and not least the best and that that's what it boils down to and i think look at you know six all irelands obviously you mentioned all the, the the stuff that he's won i mean you know this this year with the pandemic you know a lot of people are looking at different things i know he does a lot of charity stuff abroad as well and i'm sure he's looking at folks and on that um you know and the uncertainty of this season are you going to tie yourself into a season where you don't know whether it's going to go ahead or it's not, you know, in relation to other work that you want to, you want to focus on your career and other aspects of your life, whether it be family, personal relationships, whatever it is. I'm sure he's focusing on those things, you know, as we speak. And, and you know, it's a big decision for him to walk away. Um, but uh, I wouldn't assert any of it to, to the manager in relation to saying, you know, thanks for your time and I'm letting you go because... It's like any squad, if you've got better there, fine. But in, in Dublin, there isn't any better to, to be doing that. And do you think the pandemics can open a lot of players' eyes to maybe step away from the county team? Because we actually have seen in the last few weeks, your Jack McCarthy stepped away, your Jeremy Connolly, your Dan St. Edge from Carlo. Do you think the pandemic taught a lot of these players, I actually don't think I need this? It's not so much that they don't need it. Uh, you know, and, and the funny thing about the pandemic and the words you'll hear a lot is, 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 is essential. Is it essential to my life? You know, when things are smooth and work is fine and, you know, it's fo so much different now for employers as well with players. I mean, you don't have that leeway now because it's too important. Work is too important and you don't know if you're open this week, you're closed the following week. You don't know where you're... The uncertainty in, in people's minds and footballers are no different. Um, you know, and obviously you, you've mentioned one or two there that have left it already, but, you know, I mean, your whole schedule for the last 10 years has been changed now i mean you're supposed to go into into pre-season training the next couple of weeks playing through the shitty weather november december all our final 19th of december finish up for a few weeks and back at it then the end of january probably again i mean it's not it's not feasible for players really and i think you know the one good thing out of this whole thing is obviously you've seen you know the club players the county players the club being there for the whole season which has been fantastic for the clubs um obviously i know it's pulled at the moment but you know it was obviously great to see you know and great for the club players to have them guys on board at training sessions as opposed to just training once for a game and playing the match itself and um, that that stuff is 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 invaluable to clubs um you know for their growth and for the young guys in the club to see these guys are training two nights a week or three nights a week whatever it was so, you know, obviously it has a bearing on players, even the county, there's no doubt about it. Um, will you see more? You probably will, if it's pulled. I mean, that's just, that's the nature. You've got some guys 34, 35, at the end of their careers, 
you know, and this delay won't be helping. I can I can assure you that. No. Mm. And like I think like with Conley, like like he produced some absolutely unbelievable moments. Like and I think some people are near was like, you know, the soccer's or they've get or the GA's there at Cantona. Like what's some of your favourite Conley moments can you look when you look back? Uh I'd have a lot of moments with Conley that people wouldn't have seen because a lot of club stuff. I've watched a lot of club games with Vinny's over the years and, and club championships in Dublin. And, you know, I, I I wouldn't mention one or two because there's been so many, but I mean, I go back to it again in relation to some of his scores. I mean, the goal he got against Casabar a few years ago, I was commentating for Midwest Radio at the time and man, it was just, I understood it because I've seen it from him previously. Mm. Um, it wasn't alien to me to see him do that. Um, you know, some of the stuff that he does, it's magical stuff, but it's not unexplainable because it's what he does. You know, you'll see it playing for Dublin, and you, you know, you might see it once a year or twice a year, whereas people in his club will tell you that's that's what he does. That's how good he is. Um, they might only be surprised that it, it, it mightn't have happened as many times as, as it could have happened. Um, but I mean, his, his, you know, the one of the big things for me, I think, when he won the free against Mayo in the All-Ireland, you know, his timing of the, to spin the ball across, I think, I don't know who pulled him back. Someone pulled him back. He left the ball on the ground, obviously, wrap it over the bar. Very calm in that situation where other players would get excited. I have a chance to win all Ireland here with a kick lock. You know yeah. what I mean? Just left the ball down. Um, obviously, his passes last year. There's just so many stuff. But one of the things, the big thing last year against Kerry was a turnover that he took on the field and then obviously pinged in a pass. Yeah. Stuff that you don't relate to him a lot is obviously his tackling. He's very, very big. He's a big man. He's strong, you know. Um, but look, a lot of the stuff, left foot, right foot, it's, it's, it's just a different class. A lot of the stuff he does is a different class. And that's that's kind of the highest compliment you can give the man, you know. I had to laugh there last week. Alameda uh, was telling me that he played him in a college game. And Connolly was just tipping around, scoring unbelievable points, laughing. Like, do you think sometimes players just take it too seriously and lads are just like so stuck to a system like where you don't get Connolly, you could be laughing and maybe enjoying the game of football. Well, you you know, the problem you'll have, John, with a lot of players is they know they're not at that level of calibre. So it's it's difficult, you know, it's easy for him. He'll score eight or nine points, left foot, right foot, corner flag or whatever it is. I've did it myself for many years. And you'll have guys coming up who know they're never in that bracket. They're not even getting close to that bracket, man. They're not out to enjoy it. They're out to stop you playing. Like, I've always had a, fa a phrase in my life, and I've said it for years, in relation to defenders coming out who just mark you, they pull and drag you, they don't touch the ball, they don't hand pass or kick the ball. The point I've always said is I don't understand why they play the game of Gaelic football. Because they don't play the game. They go to mark you or pull you or harass you or whatever. The game of Gaelic football, where it be corner back, corner forward, get the ball, get on the ball, kick pass, solo, hand pass, whatever it may be. And, you know, you'll know one or two defenders who you could probably say they never kick the ball mm. or never do anything with the ball, bar mark the person, you know, and that's that's the nature of the game. You go back to me, oh, 96, 97, obviously Kenneth was cornerback that time, like, well able to play ball, up the field, get a point, Mark O'Shea, Tomas O'Shea. Yeah. They can mark the best of them, but they can still go and play the game. That's yeah. the game of football. And, you know, you're reverting back to your point of those lads who take it too seriously. I've taken it too seriously. It's the fact that... Yeah. They're not good enough to relax and enjoy themselves. That's why they're so into it. And, you know, they can't even say hello to you during a match. You know, they're out to kill you during a match, effectively. You know what I mean? That's that is what I'd say is taking it too seriously. You know, not, not in. They look back in 10 years and say, geez, you married him every day. And you can ask one man there, well, how many times you kicked the ball in the 10 years? Mm. And I'll guarantee you, one of the breeze, how many times you kicked the ball? That's mm. not Gaelic football. Do you know what I mean? Gaelic football is called Gaelic football for a reason. You know what I mean? And like Desi Farrell, Lucas, I know he has an array, an array of talent there, but do you think if there is a championship at the end of the year, do you think he's in, under any pressure after losing your Connolly, after losing your Jack McCaffrey, after some of these boys going, or is it just going to keep going on and keep rocking on? No, nah, he'll rock on, don't get me wrong. Desi's a well-able manager. He's well-qualified to manage. Um, he's plenty of experience. But the, the ball will fall on the 19th of December. And if Dublin aren't there, that's when you see pressure. Yeah. Dublin aren't in Ireland if they'll be under pressure. There'll be no excuses. Pandemic, players leaving, 
No excuses. That's yeah. what it'll come down to if they can get to an Ireland final and win the All Ireland. The only thing that, the only thing acceptable for Dublin is win All Ireland. Nothing else. And if they don't do that, that's when you see pressure. Yeah, the club game um, has to be rescheduled at the minute, Connor. What do you make of this return to play? Will it, like, will the county thing go ahead, or what's the verdict on the? I, 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 oh, I wouldn't be too sure. Um, I wouldn't be too confident. I was asked earlier on today, you know, just in, in a point if I was playing today, would I play? Look, at of course you're going to want to play, but I mean, every player is going to have different situations with family, you know, with elderly relations young kids, you know, would I risk it? Probably not. Um, like at the end of the day, if I was 20, 21, of course you would. When you get older, you, you know, you can see what's the way this, this virus works. You know, God forbid, you know, a player brings it home and God forbid something happens because that's, then it's too late. It's, mm. it's too late then, you know what I mean? Um, I just don't see the point. I don't see the need. I know I see a lot of people, it's needed for so for people's mental health and this, that and the other. County football, I don't agree. Um, there's a lot more sport in the TV. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to be able to go to matches. Um, so I, I think for the space of a few months, I, I don't think the risk is worth it. And I think, you you know, the, the point I'd say, and it's not a gripe, I mean, you've seen the, the fans at GA games recently. Yeah. Um, haven't gotten the chance to go to matches and now that's been taken away again due to not being able to adhere to the to the guidelines that have been made out. Um, look, we've all broke the guidelines at some stage, like don't don't yeah. get me wrong, but I mean, when you're four, two, three hundred people at a game and you got to keep space, you can't be stuck together and every game is televised that was on the television. Yeah. So the GA obviously had no choice but to, to, but to pull the games. Um, you know, I'd hope to see the county go ahead, I would. Will it happen? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I think um, if the numbers get worse and the hospitalised hospitals are, you know, getting close to capacity, I don't think you're going to see it because the risk is too high. Um, you know, you're going to have a bubble of players. If you can bubble players for three months together, then fine. But you know, in Ireland, that's that's not possible. Um, and you know, playing sport over playing a competitive competition over public health that won't bide well if there is an issue um, I don't know if you've seen it for manager today obviously they've cancelled all their activities due to obviously cases up there as well and you're going to see more of that over the next few weeks particularly in the north the north is pretty bad um, so I think unless they get on top of this then it's very very unlikely I mean the bottom line is with the GA playing county games obviously it's to turn over money yeah <laughs> That's not going to happen this year. They have the 15 million from the government. That's to sustain the teams who are going to play, yeah. um, which we all hope happens. But if there's a, if the risk is too high, obviously, you know, I, I wouldn't be pushing for it to be played if the risks are too high. And if the numbers keep going up, the risks are going to get higher. And would you would you agree that, you know, we got an inch, we took a mile because I was at a couple of club games here in Cavan and, and there was no supporters wearing masks, nothing. And I was really frowned upon wearing a mask. Like it, you know, I think I think we're, we we made our own destiny here, Connor. I think. No, and the, we definitely did. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no hiding from it. Um, now, to be fair, you know, on the other side, I didn't hear the GAA saying you had to wear masks at games. I didn't hear them saying on any. I didn't hear a, a regular communication about keeping your distance at games. I've been at plenty of club games with teams I've been in, involved with. You know, a lot of places don't even have you sanitizing. The sanitizer is there. They're not pushing you to do it going in. Um, you know, so I think it falls with the supporters. But mainly for me, it's the stadia and yeah. the grounds that you're going to. I mean, you go to a League of Ireland game and every second seat has a post round. Yeah. You know, there's nothing to say you can't paint a few marks on a, on a local club pitch to say, please stand here. Mm. But, you know, the, the reason it was pulled because effectively... GA club games are social events for people to gather and talk at. Yeah. Therefore, that's why they shouldn't have been played because that's what people do. They don't just go to watch the match. They go to meet Joe Bloggs from next door or down the road or I haven't seen you. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is fine. That's the name. That's the nature of the GEA. But under this pandemic, that's not the way it was supposed to be. And obviously it turned out that way. And now it's, it's been pulled again. So effectively, mm -hmm. yeah, we all had the chance. 
we've all broke the rules and now it's gone and that's the reality of it. Now, I, I, does it bother me? It doesn't, um, to be quite honest. But, you know, I'm sure it bothers plenty of other people. But, I mean, if everyone adhered to the rules, we wouldn't be in this situation. It's the very same in the country. Mm. You know, we've all broke the rules. There's not two ways about it. But, and now we're paying the price for it. And if you're betting, Mike Connor, uh, would, you, would you be seeing a county uh, set up now at the end of the or at end of October? Um, looking at the numbers now, no. Um, if the numbers keep going up for the next two to three weeks, not a hope, not a chance. It'll be very, it'll be very unjust when you see a business closing. Yet there's a county game on a Sunday. Yeah. You know, there's no difference. They say it's safer here, or safer there. You've got players travelling from all over the country to play county games. I know we all played Johnny Gall last week. Johnny Gall is supposed to be locked down. Johnny Gall have a case of coronavirus in their squad. Yet there's a challenge game played then somewhere up the country. I mean. You know, common sense needs to apply. It hasn't applied in a lot of places, um, unfortunately. But, you know, as I said, if the pandemic uh, and I suppose the epidemiology, whatever, keeps going, not going to happen. No chance. But if things improve, then possibly. But that's down to the people. That's down to what we do and what, what, what we don't do. Um, and, and it's everybody. I mean, yeah. it's very easy to say, right, this... 15 to 24 year olds is a quarter of the cases or whatever schools have X amount of cases. That's fine. We still need to do what we're, we're being asked to do. And there isn't enough of it being done. That's pretty much the long and short. It's frustrating for everybody. Um, but, you know, we have to take the advice. The very last one, Connor. Do you think there should have been no face masks, no entry into some of them club games in the last couple of weeks? No, I wouldn't say that because there wasn't guidance about face masks. I didn't see any guidance in the GA about face masks. It, it is governmental, yes. But in relation to the GA, I didn't hear anything saying about face masks in an outdoor setting, because it's outdoor settings. Um, would it have saved this fiasco? Probably. Uh, but, you know, I mean, everyone takes different entities to the science yeah. of a mask or no mask. Um, yeah. And I think that's the important bit, because it's mandatory to wear masks in shops. It's mandatory to wear them in indoor spaces, but outdoor yeah. spaces, it's not. Um, I don't think the mask is the issue. I think it's more the social distancing aspect that wasn't, it wasn't, how would you say it? It wasn't on view. You know, a lot of the games, people were stuck together up the north, down in Limerick, down in Galway, down in Mayo, everywhere. You know, but there's no point saying one or two places, it's everywhere. Um, and then you obviously had the fiasco in Waterford with that team in Waterford when, when the guy was waiting. I mean, that's, I know they apologise and stuff. I know it's a pandemic. This pandemic's going on for the last six months. It, it, it's unacceptable. Um, and, I, and I do think that club will get the brunt of it. And understandably so. They put a lot of people at risk by playing that guy. A lot of people at risk. Yeah. Um, and obviously you've seen what happened in the aftermath. Obviously the whole lot of the GA has been pulled now. It's not just one reason that it's pulled. It's an after. It's it, it's an uh, it's an accumulation of many things. You yeah. know, social distancing, crowds, going coming and to and from games. You know, go back to the start, boys in the piss. You know, after games as well, crowds coming onto the pitch. Um, you know, all that stuff adds up, and and that's where the GA the GA just didn't decide. They got the information. They gathered the data. They looked at this. Bang, pulling it in the story. They're not going to take blame back to them in relation to what could happen, and and and, and credit to them for that. I'm, I I will say, um, but I suppose on the other side, what do we do? I don't know. I don't know where it's gonna where it's gonna end or, or or what's gonna happen. Couldn't tell you. And a bit of personal news from yourself. Uh, the missus is pregnant. You've three more weeks. You looking forward to that? Yeah, that's exciting. Um, it's different. Um, it's very surreal, I think, due to, obviously with the pandemic going on as well. It's a scary thought, bringing a bringing a new a newborn into this world. But look, I suppose we're we're ready and we're you know we're excited. Um, a lot of work done, a lot of money spent, um, getting the getting the house ready and stuff. But look at it; it is an exciting time. It's it's difficult to kind of oversee this with this all this bad news every day on the news. Every time you're talking to somebody, or you've your own bit of good news coming, touch wood yeah. and please God, um, down the road. So, you know, we're hopeful that all all will work out well and 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 
things kind of progress. But I mean, it's it, look at it's everyone looking after themselves at this stage. Yeah. yeah, we're all in this together by all means. But I mean, you got to look after your own house, clean your hands. You know, bloody all the all the guidelines that they tell you. And we we'll hope to get out on the other side, and hopefully, and and for yourself as well. I want to wish you well with your new arrival when it comes as well, and just just be safe yourself and herself, and, and obviously the little one when it comes along, and that that's all you can do. It's not else you worry about. That's all we can do. Conor Mortimer, you're fantastic with your time uh, joining us in the Backdoor GF uh, show this week. Thanks very much and uh, um, don't do too much work there. <laughs> Take care, man. Cheers, John. Thanks very much, Connor. Bye, man. Bye-bye.